student, as a worker, whatever, as a businessman, you are meant to shine the light of God there. Hallelujah. And today you will have an encounter that will launch you into that dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning is a very special morning for us because I'll be ministering on a subject. I think something happened yesterday. I, my elder brother had his birthday and I drove there and my car developed a fault. It wouldn't move. And I was tensed at a point. The reason why I was tensed was not because of the car particularly, but because I was missing the time I was supposed to be out on evangelism that yesterday evening. And so I wasn't too comfortable, although the people were calling me, come and pray, come and lead this and that. At the point I said, let me leave the car and come back home. But somehow the car started working and we came down with the car. We came back today day with the car. And I, I was a bit not in order because... One of the things that makes me not to be in order is when I, am, I know that I have missed something with God. All right? I knew that I had a time with God and I had, I had missed that time and I was not happy with myself. So I was in the night season, I was praying and talking to God and saying, Lord, I'm sorry that I missed the time I was supposed to go out for you. I'm so sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm very sorry. And in the midst of the night, God began to speak to me about this morning's service. Amen. He kept speaking and speaking till this morning. And um, I became very sure that God wants to talk to somebody specifically this morning. Hallelujah. So this morning I'll be ministering on the subject of dealing with uncertainties. Amen. Dealing with what? Uncertainties. That was the word God kept speaking to me throughout the night. Dealing with uncertainties. What do I mean by uncertainties? I'm talking about a situation... Where you don't just know what is ahead of you. I'm talking about a situation where you don't really know what is about to happen. You don't really know how it's going to happen. It looks as if everything ahead of you is dark. It looks as if everything ahead of you is gloomy. It looks as if you don't have no hope. It's called uncertainty. You are not sure what is ahead. It's called uncertainty. This morning, God wants to teach us how to deal with uncertainties. And by the time the service is over this morning, I, I, I decree that every form of uncertainty in your life will be over. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Life itself is full of many uncertainties. Amen? Very full of uncertainties. On a daily basis, we are confronted with uncertainties. Let's read the scripture in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8 to verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Are you there? So that I will read verse 8 and you will read verse 9. Amen. Before I go on, let me apologize to us, please. The restroom, the bathroom... Um, we had an agreement that it should be put in order. So in case you are trying to go out to ease yourself and you are finding it difficult, they are still working on it at the back there. They are not yet done with it. Amen? Um, seriously on them to ensure that they finish it up so that you can easily ease yourself. Amen? God bless you in Jesus' name. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Hear the Lord. Can we read verse 9 together? For, For as, as the, the heavens, heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. thoughts. Amen. Amen. What God was simply saying here is, my own way of doing things is not the same way as your own, the way you do things. What God was simply saying here is that your own way of reasoning is not the same way he reasons. There is a difference between the way God reasons and the way a human being reason. Amen. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So when we come face to face with uncertainties, what you call uncertainty, what you say that you cannot see the future, you cannot see what's ahead, I want you to know that it's not the same way you are seeing it that God is seeing it. Hallelujah. Where you are seeing uncertainty, God is seeing certainty. Why you are 
thinking, is it possible God is seeing possibility? Why you are saying there is no hope, God is seeing hope. Hallelujah. And God is saying to you, that if you will come to me this morning, I will show you how to deal with uncertainties. What do you do when you are confronted with uncertainties? What do you do if you were Abraham at age 75? God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, he said, yes sir. He said, get out of your father's house. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Get out from your children and from your brethren to a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. You are saying somebody should get out of his father's land. You will show to him a nation. And when he says, which nation? He says, I don't know. Just go. Uncertainty. Abraham was 75 years old. God was asking him to leave his father's house and go on a journey that he did not know where the journey will end. Yet God was telling him that I promise you that you will, you will, I will make you a father of nations. Yet he didn't have one child. That is uncertainty. Can you imagine God is saying to somebody, he said, don't worry, I'm going to make you father of nations, not just one nation. Yet his wife has not been able to give birth to one child and he was already 75 years old. That was uncertain. What will you do if you were Abraham? Hallelujah. Who had and servants and slaves in his house and the servants' wives were giving birth to children but his own wife could not give birth to one child. Yet, every time he went before God, God said, you are Abraham. And Abraham means father of nations. Hope you know his name used to be Abraham. A-B-R-A-M. And God came one day and said, your name will no longer be Abraham. Your name is now what? Abraham. Because you will be father of, not that you will be, you are father of many nations. How do you say I am a father of many nations and yet I am begging you for one child and I can't see the child? Amen. What will you do if you were in that kind of situation of Abraham? What will you do if you were in the, in, the, in the shoes of Joseph? Hallelujah. What will you do if you were in the shoes of Joseph? What do you know about Joseph? That was the young man that had a dream. How many of you have heard of Joseph before? He had a dream. And in that dream he saw that people were going to bow before him. That was a dream of leadership. But we are meant to understand that when he shared it with his family, his family that have to be the strongest encouragement of his life, his family misinterpreted him and misunderstood him. The brother said, ah, you mean you are going to be head over us? Okay, we will deal with you. The father said, keep quiet. How can you be sharing this kind of dreams? You mean myself, your mother and all your brothers will bow before you? Before you know what so in, they sold him into slavery. This young man that had a dream that people would bow to him, he was going to be a leader. But this was he, it, it became a property. A slave is a property. He doesn't have himself. The people that bought him can do anything they want to do with him. So they were carrying him into the land of, of Egypt. And here he was as a slave boy. Went into Potiphar's house. From there, the woman accused him wrongly. And he landed in the prison. Amen. Uncertainty. But God, you said I'm going to be a leader. You said people are going to bow before me. But see me now. I have become a slave. I am out of my father's house. Lord, what is happening? My life is so full of uncertainties. Here am I in the prison. I hope you know anybody that went to the prison that Joseph went. It's either you came out from there alive or you came out dead. Because there were two men that the king sent to that prison. At the end of the day, one came out alive, the other one came out dead. It was a mighty prison. And Joseph was there accused of raping a woman. The future was not clear. Amen. It was an uncertainty. What would you do if you were in the situation of Joseph? Hallelujah. Or will I talk about Mary? The woman that kept herself and said, oh, I'm serving God. Yet one day the angel of God came to her and said, you are going to carry a child. And she said, how? I'm not yet married. And he said, you will get pregnant without getting married. All of a sudden, a woman who had not was not married, became pregnant. Do you know that the whole society will see her like an harlot? Amen. Yet God said, you are, the baby that you are carrying will be the savior of the whole world. How do you say I'm carrying the savior of the whole world when I am embarrassed by the situation around? 
I have to hide inside the house because people are going to ask you, Mary, your tummy is coming out. Oh. What is happening? Uh, uh, Mary, your stomach is coming out. Oh. What's happening? Even Joseph that was supposed to marry her wanted to kick her away. Until God came to him and said, don't worry, I am the one involved. Amen. Joseph said, I have not touched you before. How did you become pregnant? Okay, no problem. Let me put you away quietly. That was what that woman went through Even though God had a great promise upon his life Hallelujah What am I saying here today? I'm saying to you But how do you handle a situation Where the dreams you had The, the aspirations you had The things you wanted to achieve The great things you, you have seen That God wanted to do with your life But yet the way that you are passing through Does not look like it Is somebody still in church this morning? What do you do? How do you handle that kind of situation? Where you had a dream in the night that you were driving a jeep and you woke up in the morning to discover that it was a dream. Amen. And your, your shoes, the, the sole of your shoes have pieces because of trekking. <laughs> Amen. What do you do when you have a great vision and you have a dream and you saw yourself as a tool in God's hand and you were reaching out to other people, ministering to them, you were praying for people and setting them free. Meanwhile, you wake up in the morning and you discover that everything you saw, none of it is near your life. Hallelujah. Many persons in life they are not they are, they are they have become victims of life because they have seen themselves in a contrary in a contrary situation to the dreams that they had many persons if you ask them where they are now they don't want to be there amen i met several people in life who thought that i finished secondary school i go to the university i do this i do that i do that but somewhere along the line something went wrong they have finished the secondary school days four years, five years, six years. They have not gone to the higher institution. Amen. I know some people who say, Well, I have somebody that will sponsor me. So, so, uncle, that uncle, this one will sponsor me. I remember a lady in our local church that came to me and said, Sir, the person that has been sponsoring me suddenly he has become poor. Amen. What do you do in that kind of situation? I say, now school fees is just remaining. How many days for school fees um, to be paid? And they say, if you don't pay, you can't write the exam. What do you do in that kind of situation? I said to her, God will take care of you. Amen. I say, God will take care of you. One day she went to the examination hall. And the lecturer came and said to her, you, you are in this hall. This is the last paper you are writing. You have not paid school fees. Get out. And she remembered that my pastor said to me that God was going to do something. So she came out from the hall after the exam and she was walking on the road. Suddenly she began to hear a car honing behind her. And a man passed by and I said, young lady, why are you walking on the road like this? He said, well, I just wrote an exam now and I've not paid my school fees and they are threatening that I won't continue the exam. The man said, is that all? He said, give me your account number. She has never met him anywhere. He gave the account number that same day. The man sent the full school fees into her account. But few minutes ago, there was uncertainty. Hallelujah. There was uncertainty. I tell you the truth, when I stepped into ministry, and people say, why not work first? Why not do this first? From the university, God said to me, from now henceforth, you are for me. And I told my parents, my father couldn't understand. Everybody was wondering what was happening. And I stepped into the ministry like that. I tell you, there are days I looked into the, in, in, in the room, and there was no food. And I didn't know where the next food would come from. And there was no promise of food. It looks uncertain. Amen. It looks what? Very uncertain. It never resembled that anything will happen. But I want to tell you this morning how to deal with uncertainties. Hello. You are in a marriage. And the marriage looks very, very dark. You don't see yourselves in the next 20 years being together. Not talk of the next 50 years. The way things are going. You are just thinking of maybe a day should just come, let the children grow up, let us go our separate ways. This thing, I don't understand it any longer. It's so uncertain. But I want to tell you that in the midst of uncertainty, there is a God that is never confused. Is somebody listening to me this morning? In the midst of uncertainty, there is a God that is never confused. Anytime you come to a point where you are confused, I want you to know that God is still in charge. 
I want you to know that God is not yet confused. For God always knows what to do. That is why he says your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. The way heaven is far from the earth. So my ways are far from your ways. And my thoughts are far from your thoughts. I want to announce to somebody here this morning. That by the mighty hand of God. Every uncertainty in your life is over in the name of Jesus. Amen. That God is bringing you out of darkness into light. That Amen. God is bringing you out of darkness into light. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please sit down. Dealing with uncertainties. I mean, if you gave your life, you say, oh, I want to follow Christ. And the moment you made that decision, the closest persons to you that used to be of help to you disconnected. I remember I went to the University of Jaws for a program. And then there was this girl. It was her birthday. And this young girl gave her life to Christ after I ministered in that campus program. And she came out and gave her life to the Lord. This young lady was being sponsored in the university by a man. Amen. And this man was... Not married, they are not married, but the man was sleeping with her in order to pay her fee. And she gave her life to Christ. And the truth is that when you said, I'm no longer doing it again, the man said, Okay, well, since you are no longer doing it, you find school fees for yourself. The future looks very, very, very dim. What do you do in that kind of situation? She went ahead and took the decision. Hallelujah. I'm talking today, not only is she a graduate, she's married to a pastor. Hallelujah. God settled her. God settled her. He took over and paid the school fees. God has his own way of doing things. Hallelujah. Every uncertainty that you had before you stepped here this morning, I want to decree to you that God Almighty will sort you out. Amen. I say God Almighty will sort you out. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sharing some of these things to make you understand. A lady called me February this year. We happened to finish from the university together. And she, okay, I heard from somebody that she wanted to commit suicide. She was telling somebody. So I quickly went online. And then I saw her online and I greeted her. And she began to tell me things without me asking her. She said, since we graduated, I graduated 2012. Since we graduated 2012, this 2018, she said, number one, no job after NYC. Say so number two, relationship that I have kept for eight years. The guy just left me two weeks ago. He said, it's suicide I want to commit now. He said, our church where I'm watching, we have 21 days prayer and fasting. At the end of the 21 days prayer and fasting, I will commit suicide. Say, God doesn't love me. He's not interested in me. Everything looked dark and uncertain. I said to her, first of all, for you to say God doesn't love you and he's not interested in you is a lie. God is more interested in you than you are interested in him. And I began to minister to her online. And it came to a point, she said, okay, okay. And I told her, you need to align yourself with God. The life you are living is not the life. That is why things are going upside down. She said, what do I do now, sir? I said, you have to commit yourself to God. She did that. I began to counsel and stop this one, stop this one, and follow God and let's see what happens. I recommended for her a Bible believing anointed church because she was in another town where she can be worshiping and serving God. She began to do that. The first miracle that happened, this young man that she was supposed to marry was going for his brother's wedding or for his sister's wedding, and she was supposed to go with them, but because of that breakage, she didn't go with them. And they left here all the way to Lagos. They arrived Lagos safely, but from Lagos to the hotel, there was a drastic accident. And it happened on her birthday. The father died on the spot. The young man was rushed to the hospital. He was in coma. She called me. I said, what is it? She said, sir, God loves me. I said, what happened? <laughs> she said, today is my birthday. See, I was supposed to be on that journey if I was still in relationship with him. They say, but I wasn't there. Maybe I would have been the one to die. That was the first miracle. Three weeks later, she called me. She said, I have an interview. I said, go ahead. Two weeks later, she called me. She said, I got a job, a banking job. Everything happened within one month. You see, it was uncertain, but God made it. God stepped in. When you don't know what to do, God knows what to do. 
Few weeks later, she sent me a message. She said, a man has just come down and wants to marry me. I said, eh. He said, it's on my neck that he wants to marry, wants to marry. Before I knew what's happening, he said, oh, our introduction is two months time. They have done the introduction. Wedding date has been fixed. We are waiting for the wedding. It was uncertain. But when God stepped in, God took over. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So what do you do very quickly? Number one, maintain a strong connection to God. Hello? Maintain what? A strong connection to God. You see, the temptation is this. That whenever things are not going the way you thought they are going, there is a temptation to stay away from God. Something tells you that God does not love you. So stay away from him. So you see many persons that run away from God. You see many persons that is when they compromise. Because the devil is telling them that God does not care for them. You see many persons that is when they begin to they disconnect from God totally. Say why are you not in church today? Say because I am sick. Is it God that caused the sickness? Does it mean not going to the presence of God will heal the sickness? No. Say, so why are you not in the house of God? Why are you not serving God? You say, my brother, the way I'm suffering, eh? They run away from God when they were supposed to go closer to Him. You see, brethren, listen to me. Your relationship with God is the greatest security of your destiny. The greater, I don't know of anything that secures a man's destiny like a solid relationship with God. Hallelujah. Like what? A solid relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus. If your challenge does not disconnect you from God, then your connection to God will disconnect you from that challenge. Maintain a current relationship with God. In Psalm 23, verse 3 to 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with God with you is your greatest confidence. Maintain a strong connection to God. When Joseph was sold into slavery, you know Potiphar's wife came to him one day and said, you are a very handsome man. All you need to do is sleep with me because my husband is old and my husband is not always around. Sleep with me and I will give you money. I will take care of you. My husband will not know anything. Joseph would have slept with that woman and that would be it. But you know what Joseph said? He said, I will not, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? He refused to be disconnected from God. When God saw that he was thrown into the prison, yet he refused to disconnect from God. He was in prison, he was not away from God. He was in Potiphar's he was not away from God. God said, this young man, I step into your situation now. From the prison, God took him from there and made him the ruler over the land. Have you seen that kind of promotion before? Listen to me. Anytime it is your blessing and your favor seems to be delayed, it is because it is coming in a big way. So hold on to God until God does what He said He will do. Is somebody listening to me this morning? Hold on to God until God does what He said He will do I prophesy to someone's life here this morning I don't care the pit where you have found yourself I don't care the dungeon where you have found yourself but in the name of Jesus Christ I decree he's bringing you out and he's setting you upon the mountain top I say he's setting you upon the mountain top in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Amen Sit down Daniel said, I will not defile myself with the king's meat. Hallelujah. I will not do what? I will not defile myself with the king's meat. I will not defile myself with the king's meat. I've been in situations where things have been so tight. And then it's in that kind of situation that temptations of running to make money in ways that God does not approve will come to you. Amen. It's in those kind of situations that the devil begins to tell you, look at now, you can follow this way. This is a short course. Just go this way. Many people have been cut short because they went through short course. Amen? Not everything that glitters is gold. The ways of God is not the ways of man. Are you listening to me? If God is with you on the journey, you can be, you can be guaranteed that you will arrive at your destination. Hallelujah. How do I deal with uncertainties? Number two, know your God. Know who? In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, Paul said, I know him who I have believed. And
and I am persuaded that what I have committed into his hands, he is able to keep it until that day. I know him, I know him, I know him. I know him whom I have believed. I know him whom I have believed. I remember my first house I rented when I, I, I stepped to Lokoja. When I got there, I rented a small, house, a small room. Yeah, about 25,000 naira then. It was fate that before the room came, <laughs> amen, I rented a small room then. I was on the floor on my mat for one month, no mattress, no pot, no stove, just there like that. Amen. And then a year later, the rent expired and I didn't have money to pay for it. So I went to the place of prayer and I said, Lord, my rent has expired. I need money to pay for it. I'm serving you. And the landlord came and knocked. <laughs> so he said, you know your rent has expired? I said, yes. So when do I come for my money? I looked at him. I looked at myself. I said, in one week's time. He said, one week? I said, yes. He said, all right. He left. <laughs> I said, God, did you hear that? One week. <laughs> the one came left. The two came left. The three came left. The four came left. And I didn't tell nobody. I had two young men who were staying with me in the, in the room that time. They, they were staying along. They were just enjoying themselves. I didn't tell anybody that this house has expired. I better find where to go. The seventh day came. I was in the bathroom taking my bath and I had the voice of God. He said, Son, I said, Seventh day has come. I said, Yes. I said, Have I disappointed you? I said, Lord, you are God. You bring it or you don't bring it does not affect how I relate with you. Amen. Then I came out from the bathroom. About one or two hours later, I received a phone call. I picked the call. I said, oh, there's, a, there's something here and I want to send you a package. One hour later, I had times two of my house rent in my account. Amen. Know your God. I know him. Nebuchadnezzar said, I will throw you into the fire and let me see that God that will save you. Children, Michel Abengo say, Hey, King, we are not afraid to answer you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. I know my God. I know who? I know my God. I know Him. I know Him. I know who He is. I know what He can do. You need to know God and know that you cannot commit your life into His hands and regret it. I used to tell people, I say, if you don't know tomorrow, put your hands in the hands of the one who has tomorrow. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Say, so I don't know what my tomorrow looks like. Put your hands in his hands. He is the one who knows tomorrow and he is the one who owns tomorrow. Hallelujah. How I many of you remember that song? Because he lives, I can face. Can you sing it with me? Tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know. Oh, he knows my future. He knows my future. My life is worth a living. My life is worth a living just. Because one more time. Oh, my Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow. I can face tomorrow. God is speaking to someone right now. You can face tomorrow. Don't be afraid. Everything might look dark today, but God is saying to you that He's in charge. Yes, he holds tomorrow. The devil does not hold tomorrow. My life is what a living just. My life is what a living just. Because he lives. Let me round up quickly before we pray. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. Say write the vision and make it plain upon the table. That in my run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. He said go in. Wait for it. 
For if he not tarry, he say he shall speak at the end. He shall speak. Is somebody hearing me? At the end, he shall speak. At the end, he shall speak. For surely there is an end. Proverbs 23, verse 18. And thine expectation shall not be cut short. Let me tell your neighbor, your expectation shall not be cut short. Tell another person, your expectation shall not be cut short. Know the God that you serve. The problem with us who say we are Christians is the fact that we go to church but we don't know the owner of the church. Amen. We don't know what God can do. One young man came to me one day. He said, Sir, I said, What is that? I said, I need 3,500. He called an amount of money that he needed at that time. Otherwise, there was an admission he was about to lose. I looked at him. He said, Sir, I was seeing him for the time. So compassion gripped me. He wasn't a member of the church in Lobuja. I said, All right. Right now, I don't have that money to give to you. He began to cry. Big, big man in the office. He began to, I said, Stop crying. I said, do you know God? I said to him, I said, I know God. I said, do you know God can do it? I said, let us pray. So I held his hand. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this case before you. Handle it now. In Jesus' name. The young man was looking at me when I finished. I said, you can go. Go to where the, the admission. Go and tell them that they should process the admission. He said, sir, the money. I said, but I just pray for you now. Don't you believe God has done it? I believe, I believe. In the midst of that, I received a phone call. And a friend called me, a lecturer friend, said, Are you in the office, in your office? I said, Yes, I'm in the office. I'm passing by. I want to see you. So he came. As soon as he entered the office, he saw the young man. He looked at me and said, Your face looks familiar. Do we know ourselves? Incidentally, they happen to worship in the same church. When he looked at me and, and, and I said, Oh, the young man is in little distress now because he needs some amount of money to tackle his um, admission which is closing in the next one hour and he said well if you are the one who said it that he needs help that is not a problem he dipped his hand in his pocket brought the complete money and gave to the young man the young man went on the ground i said to him i know god amen many times i don't know how he will do it but i know he will do it your ways are not my you are thinking God will come like this but we come like this your eyes are looking at your uncle but God will use somebody somebody somewhere who if you see him normally you will think that he cannot do anything your eyes waiting for that man big man that will throw money into the account ah, in my little years in ministry I have seen that the people that God has used to, to sow seeds and release some blessings in the ministry there are people who don't look like it at all at times i tell them why will you give carry this he say no sir you don't understand amen meanwhile big big people can be making promises if you put your eyes on man you will be disappointed if you fix your eyes on god you'll be elevated hallelujah know your god and number three trust your god amen trust who trust your god I watched one movie several years ago that changed my mentality. This was a young man. He was posted as a copper to a village. And that village was full of witchcraft and voodoo. And he said he cannot stay. He didn't come to die. So he was running away. On his way going, he was kidnapped. When he was kidnapped, I those rough looking guys with their cutlasses, they took him to the bush. Him and the other guy that were running. And they tied them. And their boss came with a cutlass. He will leave the cutlass like this and the boy will start shouting, please, I beg, I beg, I beg. So while they were checking his back, they saw a Bible. So the man said, are you a Christian? He said, yes. So, why you are running away from that tower, B, because of the evil that is there. The man said, then the man looked at him and said, see this cutlass? He said, I am a ritualist. He said, this cutlass is my instrument of work. He said, I trust in this cutlass so much that I know that when I use it, it will work. Say, I trust in my God last, but you don't trust in your Bible. Amen. Trust in your God. God said, Paul said, I will make my boast in God. I will do what? I will make my boast in God. Shadrach, Mishael, Bengo said, Trust into the fire, our God can do it. 
They said to Daniel, don't pray. Anybody that prays, lions den. Daniel said, that is not a problem. He knelt down, prayed and opened the court. He said, see me as I pray. They took him and threw him into the lion's den. And he entered confidently. How many of you know that only the fear of lion can kill somebody? That you know that you are going to put in lion's den. By the time they will come to arrest you, are already dead on your own. <laughs> you say, He's dead already, no need for lion. But this man entered lion's den gallantly, confidently. Why? I trust in God. Hallelujah. Brethren, listen to me. God does not call a man to waste him. God is not a waster of life. If, he, if you give him your life, he will multiply. He will bless it. He will increase it. I read one more scripture and then we rise up to pray. Is somebody blessed this morning? Let's look at this scripture. In 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings chapter 3. And I read verse 9 to verse 11. Just follow me because of time. Verse 9 to 11 it says, So the king of Israel and the king of Judah and the king of Edom, three of them, they fetched a compass of seven days journey and there was no water for them they, and the cattle that followed them. So the king of Israel said, Oh, alas, God has called this three of us together in order to deliver us into the hand of Moab. God has asked us to go on this journey in order to destroy us. But what was the answer? The next verse, the Bible said, Joseph has said, is there not a prophet of the Lord? Let us go and ask God. God knows the way out of this situation. And when you jump from there to verse 15, because of time, Elisha began to speak and say, listen, make the, the valley full of dishes. You might not hear the sound of wind. You might not see rain, but the dishes will be full of water. You are thinking that the only way for water to come is for water to come from up. But God said you will not see any wind or any rain, but the dishes will be full of water. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God never asked you to give him your life in order to waste your life. If you give him your life, he can keep your life. And I tell you, God can make you what no other man can ever make you rise up on your feet. Say, pray that trust in the Lord. Allow my Zion that can never be moved. Lift up your hands to heaven. Thank Him. Because you can see the light. Thank Him. Because you can see the light. Father, we thank, thank you. Him Lord because Jesus. that uncertainty because is over. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because, thank oh, Lord. Because thank you. Because beyond you. every uncertainty, we can see your light. Thank Even you, Lord. Lord. Because we can see your light. Thank you, Lord. Because you are not a confused God. Thank you, Lord, because in our life we shall no more be confused. We worship you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, you Lord. Thank you, because all the way on the city has been removed from us. Give it out, glorify, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I believe God said this was specifically for somebody. You are going to pray a prayer this morning. Lord, every darkness in my life, every confusion in my life, let it end now. Let that confusion come Father, to an end in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Every uncertainty in my life. Every confusion in my life. Let that break the 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 break Pray to the Every uncertainty in my life is to an end today. Let us Every confusion in my life is to an end today. Let us 
Karila Masune Balatana, Ena Mande Kale Brode Zadle Rota, La Brato Segre Bede Glere No Shedele, Ena Nana 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 Today is Genesis 1 when in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was void and dark and um, formless and darkness over the surface of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved over the surface of the water and God said let there be light and there was light you are going to make a declaration and say father in every area of my life let there be light Amen. lift up your voice and pray now every area of my life let there be light let there be light let your light shine in every area of my life let there be light in every area of my life let there be light 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 let there
over your life. From today, the God that makes a way where there seems to be no way, make the way for you in the name of Jesus. I don't care how uncertain that thing looks like. But by the efficacy of the word of God that has come to you this morning, before the next one week is over, God is making a way. Amen. For some of you, under the next 24 hours, that confusion is over. Amen. That case that seemed to be looking like you're about to lose it by the supernatural hand of God. That case is torn in your favor. It is torn in your favor. It is torn in your favor. It is torn in your favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree let there be light. 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 In your family. Let there be light. In your ministry. Let there be light. In your business. Let there be light. In your academies. Let let there be light in your job. Let there be light in your body. Let there be light in every aspect of your life. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No matter how long you have been in that affliction one day is appointed for the end of that affliction and today is the end of that affliction therefore every stranger moving in your body every satanic order operating in your body system by the fire of the Holy Ghost I ask them and consume them out of your body now in the name of Jesus Every financial downtime that you are experiencing, the blessing of the Lord make everything added no sorrow with. The hand of the Lord is turning your financial life around in the name of Jesus. Financial favors will locate you. I decree open doors in the name of Jesus. Stretch off your hands. Stretch off your hands in front like this. 
today I prophesy. The work of your hands shall prosper. The work of your hands shall prosper. Every spirit that makes money to disappear from your hand without you knowing how it is going. Today I arrest it in the name of Jesus. Your hands shall prosper. And whatever God puts into your hands shall no longer be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus. I release the blessing upon you. In Jesus precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. One minute, all eyes closed, all eyes bowed. I told you, the greatest guarantee of your destiny, both your destiny on the earth and where you will spend your eternity, is your connection to God. When Jesus is in our lives, we are not afraid of tomorrow. We are not afraid of death. Because when we have lived our life on earth by the help of God and we have fulfilled purpose drastically and our time is over on earth and our body goes to rest, we are not afraid because we know there is an eternal home. There is also an eternal home for anyone who says, I don't want Jesus, who decide to live their lives the way they want. It is called hellfire. God didn't make hellfire for human beings. He made it for the devil and his wicked angel. But anyone that follows the way of the devil Definitely ends with the devil Anyone here this morning That want to say Sir, this Jesus you are talking about I want him in my life Wherever you are All eyes closed, all eyes bowed Place one hand on your chest please, And God will help you As you pray this prayer today Your life will never remain the same Come something drastic Is happening in you and with you forever Place one on your chest boldly and say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. Today I come to you. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I accept you died on the cross of Calvary for my sake, and on the third day you rose up for my justification. Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me clean by your precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And from today, I receive grace to serve you all the days of my life. I receive grace to serve you all the days of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep the hand on the chest. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who have come to you this today, Lord Almighty. And I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, your grace that has brought them to the kingdom, the same grace shall keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. And from today, their sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus, and their lives will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Father, I decree every error of the past is passed forever in Jesus name a new beginning becomes for their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you father for you have done it in Jesus mighty name we pray I pronounce you blessed in the name of Jesus Christ God let us to those of you that give your life Christ please you will feel those form and after the closing we will collect them from you the Lord bless you hallelujah Amen. Somebody is blessed here this morning. Put those beautiful hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah.